After a year of use, I noticed a moisture condensation on the inside of this plastic lens of the Cygolite, Expilion 250. Moisture always tends to get into sealed units, no matter how well you seal them. So I took it apart. It just comes apart with a few screws and a little lens. I, I, I've dried this out under a lamp and cleaned the lens, the, uh, the crystal, with Q-tips. This just drops in. And then the capsule goes back together, and this goes into the, into the casing. Let me see if I can put it back together off camera. Okay, so the capsule's in, and then a little screw goes in there, that hole, and the one on the other side. <clears throat> so the second screw goes in there. You can hardly see the screw hole. These things are not uh, truly uh, perfectly sealed, and they really can't be. If you get any water into the back of the cycle light through the little charging plug hole, that, that puts moisture into the unit, and eventually it's going to gravitate to the front because there's no uh, water seal in the capsule. The crystal, the cover here, this this has got a, a gasket, so water doesn't get in there, and water doesn't theoretically get in through this uh, silicone gasket. I'll put a little silicone grease on it to ensure, but you want to always be sure after charging, if you're going to ride out in the, in the damp, uh, make sure the little rubber plug is fully seated. It's a, it's a little bit of a trouble pop problem, so I, I tend to grease it with silicone grease, and then it pops in, but sometimes I forget to get it in or it pops out, and I've gotten water in the unit. Just a little bit. It doesn't take much, but eventually it'll work its way up to the front and fog the lens and cut your light output considerably. Let's put it together. Now the capsule is screwed in place. This goes, slips in, then it'll go into the case. You'll have to remove the rubber button or lift it because it has to clear. The rubber button presses on this little red dot. That's what turns the unit on and off and goes through the, the cycling of bright, medium, low, and then flash. So now there's this is in here. Get it seated. Put it into the black case, and then there's three screws that go in. One, two, three. And I'll grease, I'll do this off camera, I'll put a, a, a film of silicone grease on this silicone gasket. It probably isn't needed, but it can't hurt. The silicone grease I happen to use, I've been using for over 40 years. I took this home from the U.S. Navy, from our submarine tender. They were throwing it away because it was old stock. It's from about 1950. might even be from the late 1940s. Silicone grease is nice because it's absolutely inert. It never ages. It's completely inert to all chemicals. And as you see, one jar will last a lifetime. Okay, now I'm ready to slide this together. The original push button is lost, so I have to get another one. I made a, one out of silicone rubber. But you see, when you have this put together, see the little red button? When you press on this, it lightly pushes that tiny button and cycles it through its, uh, its switching modes. See, now the lens is relatively clean, much better than it was before. Three screws and it's done. It's a good practice when putting screws into die cast or any material to turn the screw backwards until it finds the thread. Then carefully turn it in and feel the thread engage. Then you can go ahead and snug it in. Snug the three screws evenly. Go around three times. Do you see how the uh, little micro switch button works? God, so clumsy. So the rubber button that covers this presses on that little red button. Press once, on, high, medium, low. Hold it, off. Okay, so I'm going to put my little makeshift button back on. It's ugly. And I'm going to put it on with some uh, a fresh coat of this. Silicone adhesive sticks to itself, so this will make a water seal. And until I get a new one, this, will, this serves just fine. Okay, thank you. See, now it's basically together. Relatively clean lens. And the uh, lithium battery, it's always good to give the contact surfaces a wipe with a little metal polish or with a Q-tip. It's nickel plate, and when nickel oxidizes, it's not a very good conductor, so the battery goes in. And when you do this, the light comes on automatically. Now let's see if my uh, light functions properly. Medium, low, flash. Press the button in all the way and hold it for a second, and it turns off. Now, if you want to turn it on and have it go into low power mode, like to use as a general purpose uh, low power flashlight, it'll run for, oh, 20 or 40 hours at this brightness. That's your SOS. Press the button and hold it for a second, and it turns off. Now, to use it as a bicycle light, one press turns it on high, second press put, turns it on low, medium, and then low, you turn it off, press the button, and 
hold it till it's off. And there's that little uh, USB port for charging. I'll put a little grease on it so it's raining outside and I want to go for a bicycle ride. So I'm going to make sure that this is in the rain. I'm going to make sure this is not going to let water get into it again. But if it does, I'll know because the lens will get wet with condensation on the inside. So aside from needing a new, needing a new push button, my Saiga light is still in perfect condition after over a year of use. I recommend it highly. It's a good product and it's repairable. With experience, I'd do a better job. There are a few little fibers from the Q-tip uh, cotton swab in there, but that really doesn't matter. It's much better than it was before. I had lost a great deal of light output because there was water droplets on the inside of the crystal. And my crude little rubber button, I shaved it half of its original thickness using a, a razor blade uh, lubricated with dishwashing soap. It's not pretty, but it works. And you know what, when I put it back in, I put some silicone on the inside of it and then press it in place. But first, I swab the little red button with silicone grease. That way this stuff won't stick to it. That means I can pull this out next time I need to take it apart. But anyway, it's much easier to press on, off. It's much easier than the original button. So when I do get a, a replacement button someday, I'll probably fit it the same way. You understand? Taking up the clearance between the, the red button inside and the bottom surface of this means that when you press it lightly it'll turn on. Most of these are rather hard to turn on and that's for a reason. You don't want them to turn on accidentally if you were to put it in your pocket. You really shouldn't. I want it to be easy to turn on. So for me this works well. I need to ask the Saigo Light people to send me a, a new rubber button. Okay. I hope this was a help.